We want to find the limit as x approaches a of this function algebraically. And so when I see something like this one, the first thing I would do is say, well, can I directly evaluate? Can I put in 3? And when would I have issues? I would have issues if putting in 3 made me divide by 0, but it doesn't. So let's go ahead and put in 3. So 3 squared minus 9 over 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 3. So that, the numerator is actually going to be 0, but since the denominator is not, actually the denominator it looks like is 12, so we're fine with it equaling 0. So the limit as x approaches 3 here of this function is 0. Now looking at this second one, I can't directly put in a 2 because I would be dividing by 0 and there's not really any algebra to do. That's pretty much simplified. So I'm going to think of this by looking at a value very near or by looking at a graph. So let's do both of those. First of all, I could get a quick sketch of this one because I know what 1 over x looks like and this is just a horizontal shift to the right 2. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote at 2 and the graph then looks like this because that's what 1 over x looks like but now we're just moved to the right 2. So knowing that I could see and there's a little negative here as x approaches 2 from the left hand side I can see that this function is going towards negative infinity. So I could answer it looking at the graph. I also could answer that by looking at a value very near 2 but on the left hand side of 2. So maybe like 1.999. Well, the important thing here is when I subtract this, I will get a negative number on the bottom. The top is positive, so I will get a negative. I knew it was a vertical asymptote because it didn't reduce, but I just needed to decide which way it was headed. Was it headed to positive infinity or negative infinity? And it's negative. All right, let's look at the third one. This one I'm looking at a limit at infinity. So the limit as x goes to infinity and we want to do these using calculus and show how we use the limit. So I am going to rewrite this and I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by 1 over x to the third. And I don't have a lot of room here so I'm going to write down what my factor I'm multiplying by is. It's 1 over x to the third and I found that because I looked at the highest power in the denominator and if I would multiply by 1 over that highest power then I would get a constant in the denominator, in this case a 3, and so that's my motivation for doing that. If I multiply the numerator by 1 over x to the third I will have 2 minus 5 over x plus 1 over x squared minus 3 over x to the third and in the denominator I will have 3 plus 2 over x plus 5 over x squared and then minus 1 over x cubed. Now we are actually ready to let x go to infinity. Anything with a constant numerator, denominator becoming large going to infinity will go make the fraction go to 0. So all of those are gone and we are left with 2 thirds. So that's our answer. That's also, if we were looking at this graph, a horizontal asymptote because we know we find horizontal asymptotes by seeing what's happening as x goes to infinity. Okay, let's look at our last one here. We want to approach 3 from the right hand side. Well, there's nothing wrong with plugging in 3. It won't make the denominator 0, so that's what I'm going to do to find this doesn't matter if it's left or right when I can do it exactly here. So I am going to go ahead and put in this 3. And so it looks like I get 3 on the top and 7 on the bottom. So this limit is 3 sevenths.